Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to explain the basics of EQing and some of the basic terms that come up with EQs. What I've chosen to do is use frequency in Cubase. Frequency is a, what we class as a parametric EQ. The reason I've cho chosen parametric is because it's visually much easier to see what's happening. And even, well, we won't play music for it today because we'll be quite brief on this, but we'll, we'll look at a, um, a lesson where we actually play music through it. It's so one thing you could try if you've got a reference track, something you're really used to um, listening to in your car or on your headphones or wherever. Run it into Cubase, import it into Cubase, and run it through frequency or any w DAW you're in. Have a look at running through your parametric EQ, and you can actually see the frequencies in that mix. Now, on a parametric EQ, it's great because it's so visual, but also you've got this line. This is R0, so we haven't boosted any frequencies we haven't cut any frequencies so you see this is the zero across here and it runs from 20 Hertz to 20k now if you're the best possible hearing supposedly we can hear 20 Hertz to 20k now um, it's it's just the standard we work to in mixing and in um, physics of the frequency spectrum we listen to so with this is our base frequencies towards the left and as we go up, we go for our mids up to our high frequencies and our super highs or our brilliance at the top. So what we call these at the at the very bottom, so our, to the very left hand side, I call our subs. So our sub bass, you've probably heard people talking about sub bass. Now, if you're listening through on um, a laptop or um, an iPhone, you probably won't hear any of these subs at all because the speakers just aren't capable of um, reproducing it. But cinemas, clubs, um, anyone with a sound system with a, um, an extra um, sub bass, you generally will be able to hear these then. So this is, we work in mono on this, but we'll, we'll look into this in, in more detail, the bass frequencies. But this is what we would class as our subs. So we're looking at anything between 20 to 50 or 60 hertz here. So, you know, there's a bit of a crossover of all of these frequencies. But when people are discussing say they're doing a tutorial on YouTube or producers discussing their sub-frequencies, this is the kind of area they're talking at. And then the next area, say from 50 or 60, then getting up to um, 200, 250, something like that, this area, this is our bass frequencies. Now, bass frequencies, even if you've got an instrument that's perhaps not a, a bass instrument as such, like a bass synth or a bass guitar, it still may find once you put it through your parametric EQ, you'll find that some of the um, the information is still down here. Whether you class that as low rumble and you want to get rid of it, it's another thing. But certainly, a lot of instruments or a lot of, will take up a lot of hog a lot of this area. So, but you find if you boost too much, you can get quite a boomy sounding mix. So we drag this up, and if you take too much away, you can get quite a thin sounding mix. So it's it's doing things quite cautiously working with EQ. And then once we get from here, so this is what we would class as our base area, we then get to our low mid. So now this is anywhere between this sort of area here. Now, if you watch um, producers on YouTube or listen to producers talking and podcasts, etc., they they talk about this low mids um, as a problem area for it can make things. Um, sound quite muffled or it, again it's it can get things muddy i think you'll hear a lot of people use the term muddy that's what i was looking for so certain instruments you'll notice that even on individual drums producers perhaps take down a little bit of the low mids on some things but of course it's experimentation is the key with this perhaps import a snare drum and have a look at taking some of these these presets at the top are fantastic as well if you I always think presets are quite a nice way to start because whoever's um, put these presets in, you would hope uh, would have a, quite a lot of audio experience or production experience so you can see what people's different ideas are. So this is what we would class as our low mids. And then we're going into our mid range. So our mids, these are sort of, um, if you boost these too much, you can end up with um, quite a tinny sound. Again, it's the case of let's import something in soon and we'll we'll boost these up so we can hear them. Then we're getting into a high mid range. That's from sort of 2 to 4, 5k onwards is sort of what we'd class as the highs. And this would be the brilliance of the sound or the, the air of the mix. 
but this is getting into what we would class as the high mid range now this is where perhaps percussive sounds live or the attack of the instrument even if you've got a bass guitar and if you imagine you've recorded a bass guitar for plectrum and you're hitting the strings obviously you're going to get a lot of around 100 like the kick drum and the bass will live around here but you've also got that initial attack of the sound the attack is the first part of the sound and that's quite a or a percussive sound and quite often people want that in their bass sound because it's part of the instrument but this is where that sort of area would live and then once we get up to the top these are what we class as our highs or super highs up here or our brilliance or the air of the mix now quite often as well you'll see we just put a bit of a shelf on here shelf just bring it up and then let it sit up there and that could bring out a lot of the sparkle of the mix things like that that's that's what they're trying to add now, again it's worth import your favorite track in and run it for a parametric EQ to see how it works now the reason I've cho chosen the parametric as well is because I wanted to look at these key terms one thing when I was looking in, into EQing when I was beginning people were talking about a low cut a high pass or a high cut and a low pass and it was quite confusing but basically they're the same thing so if I just go to our low frequency here so this is our sub at number one I'm going to put a, a low cut in here and basically what I can do is actually move this around and you can actually while you've got music playing listen until you start to hear that affecting the sound so a low cut will cut out the low frequencies it's a low cut it's the cutting out the low but what a low cut also is is a high pass because you're cutting out the lows but you're also letting the highs pass if you imagine this is just cutting these away you've closed the gate off and then you're letting the highs pass and th this goes exactly the same when we're looking at the high frequencies so at number eight you see we've got the highs, super highs or the brilliance if I put a high cut I can move this around and so if I cut the highs it's called a high cut but it's also a low pass because you've cut the highs and the lows are allowed to pass through so a high cut is the same as a low pass and a low cut is the same as a high pass because you're cutting the lows and letting the high pass. I hope that makes sense. It's, it can be quite confusing all these terms in audio engineering and audio production and things. So the other thing I wanted to briefly look at as well, obviously one thing I forgot to mention, you can actually see where these sit on the piano. If you actually play the piano or if you've got a piano in front of you, you can see where these frequencies we were talking about, so 1K or 50 hertz up to 20,000, you can actually see where they sit on a piano the frequency range okay sorry I wanted to look at what we would class as a notch EQ now this is something that is really great for parametric EQ because you've got much more control over say a standard graphic equalizer we would use to seeing on hardware systems and stuff with a, a parametric EQ if we look at let's take choose let's choose a frequency band so we're going to choose number three here you can see we've got number three all I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to notch and then you see you've got your frequency so where the frequency is is at 250 but I've got this thing called a Q now the Q factor is how broad you want to be editing so how wide that EQ you're going to be editing and let me show you because it's easier to, if I turn up the gain on number three you'll see it's starting to rise here you can do this manually you can drag it up so if I bring that all the way up and then I change my Q factor you can see it's getting much narrower that the frequency spectrum I'm going to edit or as I bring it down you can see it's getting wider now because it's on notch a notch EQ you can get a very narrow band to edit this is something they also call surgical EQing you can basically put a notch EQ find a reasonable amount of um, frequency width and then you can actually bring your gain all the way up and just listen to some music and sweep it through and you'll hear those frequencies certainly if you've got a soloed instrument so if you've got soloed electric guitar you can sweep through and you can find frequencies that sound harsh anything that you're using that much gain on is going to sound quite harsh but you'll know what I mean when I find it we'll, we'll, we'll run this with a lesson so basically you can actually if you're listening to a solo guitar you can hear if you've got a, a frequency like a sitting frequency or a, a resonant frequency when you listen to it, it always seems apparent, even if it's changing chords, you've always got a slight whistle or something that you're not too keen on. You can actually 
find this by sweeping through and once you've found it what I would perhaps do is look at how much of the, the frequency you want to affect it's experimentation again and then once you have found it you can bring it down slightly by using the gain so once you go into negative figures you're actually going um, you're, you're cutting frequencies then so you can actually find out the amount you want to cut if you have a massive amount you know, it's really, you've got to be careful, you're going to find out, you're going to suddenly starting to sound unnatural, but sometimes just taking a few dB makes such a difference to the sound if you've got something you're not too keen on. It could be all kinds of things you can use this for. It could be a, a pick scrape or a fret buzz. You can find just the frequency at that time and bring it in. You can also um, automate these, which we'll look at. So use the gain. Once you've found a frequency you're not keen on, bring it down slightly. The other thing you can do once you've found it, you've got this thing generally on a parametric EQ called an invert. So that takes your gain and inverts it. The problem I think with the inversion is if you've if you found it by boosting it all the way up that frequency and then you invert, this is going to sound, that's a massive amount of EQing. So I'd then look at bringing that back up because you don't want to use as a general rule of them, not necessarily, you, you know, it's your mix, you can do what you want with it, but it's you know, I think starting with certainly um, less is more when we're dealing with EQ because you can go down a rabbit hole with this slightly. The other thing I would suggest just before I go is um, in any DAW, look at the presets. Look what, um, because whoever set these presets up, you would hope would have a lot of audio in and production experience. So you can go through all of these. If you load up a clap or if you load up a kick drum, have a look what they they've actually used for their settings. So whoever um, produced these presets. And then you can see what other people use as well. And it's, you know, it's good to experiment. So again, load up your favorite song or a song you're very familiar with. Run it through the parametric EQ, so frequency in Cubase or whatever you have. And experiment with sweeping through these frequency ranges. Also, listen when you're listening through it, you can visually see it. Have a look at visually seeing what frequencies and how I think a lot of mixes that I see how controlled that is across here it's you know it's quite rare in a full mix to see things really bumped up in certain frequency ranges things work well together what we'll do in a future lesson is have a look at how we can get instruments to work together even if they share the same frequency range but this is the parametric EQ and I hope that helps cheers <laughs>